The deadliest bites in the dinosaur kingdom are back, and they rate chomping at the bit to take the title of the most powerful bite force ever. Welcome to the Bite Force Champs, where today we will be pitting three of the most fearsome carnivores of all time against one another in the ultimate test of raw power. Will it be the Tyrant Lizard King, the King of the Dinosaurs, or perhaps our giant Saurian Overlord? And how could we forget about the mighty Carnotaurus, who will come out on top? You'll have to watch till the end to find out. First up, it's the star of, of, of many films and a favorite among paleontologists and Dino fans alike. Please say hello to our first contestant. Tyrannosaurus Rex needs no introduction. This behemoth from the late Cretaceous roamed what is now the western side of North America between 68 and 66 million years ago. It was truly the king of the dinosaurs ruling over its environment without a care in the world. Its name translates to Tyrant Lizard King and is well deserved. This dino was one of the largest and most ferocious carnivores that ever lived. One of the main reasons for this was its astonishing bite, the jawbone of T. Rex has a length of 40 centimeters, a width of 18 centimeters, and a height of 17 centimeters. With a total length of around 13 meters, a height of 4 meters, and a weight of 7 tons, this guy's bite would leave nothing but meaty scraps in its wake. But just how powerful was that bite? In 2010, researchers estimated that the T. Rex had a bite force of about 12,800 pounds per square inch, or 885 megapascals. That's 50% more powerful than the mighty saltwater crocodile, which has a bite force of 3,700 kilograms per square inch, or 257 megapascals. To put into perspective how strong that is, the T. Rex could easily crush bones, even those of its prey like the Triceratops, whose skull could withstand the pressure of a car running it over. What is even more impressive is that it could do this with just the front part of its mouth. If it were to use its entire mouth, its bite force would probably be much higher. But that's not all dot the T. Rex had something else up its sleeve that made it such an efficient hunter. See, while its bite was indeed powerful enough to break bones, its jaws lacked the flexibility to do so efficiently. You see, when it comes to biting down on something, the ideal approach is to keep your mouth closed as tightly as possible before clamping down. This ensures that the bones don't slip out of your mouth as you chomp down on them. However, since the T, Rex's upper and lower jaws weren't perfectly lined up. It couldn't seal its mouth completely. To solve this problem, nature gave this Dino teeth that were serrated like a bread knife, enabling it to slice through flesh and slice off chunks of bones without having to worry about them slipping out of its mouth. So basically, thanks to its combination of a rock hard bite and jagged teeth, no dinosaur was safe from being picked off by this Dino. That's why it earned the title of the greatest predator of all time. Uh, T. Rex isn't the only one vying for the top spot. Let's see if our next contestant can outdo this Dino. Enter the arena, Giganotosaurus, the giant southern lizard. This Dino was a true giant, reaching lengths of over 13 meters and weighing upwards of 9 tons. It lived in what is now South America during the late Cretaceous period between 97 and 94 million years ago. Like the T. Rex, the Giga was an apex predator, meaning it was at the top of the food chain in its environment. And like the T. Rex, its position at the top of the food chain was largely due to its incredible bite. While the jaws of the Giga are unknown, scientists believe they were similar to those of the sea Megalodon. This is because the dinosaurs belong to the same family called the Cenozoridae. These kinds of jaws have a, a length of 50 to centimeters, a width of 20 centimeters, and a height of 18 centimeters. Using this jaw structure, the Giga had a bite force of 15,376 pounds per square inch or 1,041 megapascals. 
That's 18% more powerful than the TREXs. And how exactly did scientists arrive at that number? Well, they used a formula that factors in the cross-sectional area of the jawbone and the muscle size of the animal. Since the giga was much larger than the T, Rex, its jawbones and muscles had to be proportionally larger as well. And because the area of the jawbone determines the amount of force that can be generated by the muscles attached to it, the giga's larger jawbone allowed its muscles to generate much more force, giving it a much stronger bite. It should come as no surprise that with a bite that's strong, the giga was capable of crushing bones with ease. And according to paleontologist Peter Makovicki from the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, its bite was even powerful enough to crunch through turtle shells. But the competition doesn't end there. We still have one more dino to go. So let's bring him into the arena. All hail Carnotaurus, the horned dinosaur. This dino lived in what is now South America between 72 and 70 million years ago. During the late Cretaceous, it was shorter than the other two contestants and only 7.5 meters long and weighed around to tons. However, what it lacked in size, it definitely made up for in bite force. You see, the skull of the Carnotaurus was extremely robust, measuring 30 for centimeters wide and 66 centimeters long. The teeth of the Carnotaurus were also exceptionally large, measuring 20 to centimeters long. Despite being short, the Carnotaurus had a disproportionately large head that was almost half the length of its entire body. This is similar to the modern-day great white shark, which also has a very large head. Sharks generally have large heads for two reasons. The first is that it gives them a, a larger surface area for sensory organs like the eyes and gills, allowing them to detect prey and breathe more efficiently. The second reason is that a, a larger head allows for a stronger bite It's the size of the jaws and teeth are determined by the size of the skull. So it seems that the Carnotaurus had a, a similar advantage. Paleontologists used microcomputed tomography to scan the preserved skull of a Carnotaurus to determine the thickness of its cranial bones. This technique uses x-rays to create detailed images of fossils without damaging them, which is important for preserving fragile specimens. By studying these images, Paleontologists can learn about the anatomy and physiology of extinct animals like the Carnotaurus. They found that the bones in its skull were incredibly thick, ranging from 4 to 10 centimeters in thickness. This thickness suggests that the Carnotaurus had a powerful bite that could easily crush bones. So, how strong was that bite? One team of scientists estimated it to be 1,000 to 124 megapascals, or 17,598 psi. Another team put it a little higher, at 1,378 megapascals, or 20,000 psi. These numbers are even higher than those of the previous two contestants. So it seems that the Carnotaurus had the strongest bite of them all. And just to give you an idea of how strong that is, it's nearly twice the strength of the great white shark's bite. And if you've ever seen the movie Jaws, you know that this guy's bite is anything but weak. With a bite force that's strong, you'd think that the Carnotaurus would have been at the, the top of the food chain. But surprisingly, that wasn't the case. You see, the Carnotaurus lived in an environment with other large predators like the Giganotosaurus and the Mapusaurus, so it had to compete with them for food. While its bite was strong enough to kill most animals, it probably wasn't strong enough to take on a full-grown sauropod. That's why it likely fed on smaller prey like ornithopods and armored dinosaurs. And there you have it, folks. The winner of the Bite Force Champs is the Carnotaurus. Stay tuned for more videos like this one. And don't forget to subscribe to get notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.